Mr. Gillsleeve. Oh, Mr. Gillsleeve. Uncle isn't here, Bertie. Well, if he ain't here, why don't he say so? Tonight, in a new fall and winter series of Wednesday evening broadcasts, the Kraft Foods Company presents Willard Waterman as the Great Gildersleeve. <laughs> Great Gildersleeve is brought to you by the Kraft Foods Company, makers of parquet margarine and all those other wonderful Kraft quality foods. It tastes so good. It's always fresh. It's parquet margarine made by Kraft. Yes, when you buy margarine, remember, the margarine millions prefer to any other is parquet margarine made by Kraft. The reason they prefer parquet is because it tastes so good. And the reason it tastes so good is that it's always fresh. In states where colored margarine is sold, get yellow parquet in its new Flavor Saver package, each golden quarter pound individually wrapped in Flavor Saver aluminum foil. Elsewhere, get parquet in the handy Color Quick bag or regular package. In any state, in any package, parquet is the margarine that tastes so good because it's always fresh. That's P-A-R-K-A-Y, parquet margarine made by Kraft. <laughs> This morning, the great Gildersleeve took his little nephew, Leroy, down to Hogan Brothers' department store to buy him a suit. And while he was there, he bought one for himself, too. Did he have it wrapped? Not the water commissioner. He's wearing it home, and it's quite a suit. You bet. Latest thing, dill pickle green. Hey, Al, could we walk on the other side of the street? You what for, my boy? Well, there's not so many people over there. With you in that suit, walking in this crowd is dangerous for a little kid. They get to looking at you and walk right over me. Now, Leroy, let's not be jealous. You have a fine suit, too. Holy cow, on that color. Dill pickle green. You could wear that to a masquerade party. Masquerade? Sure. Put on a mustard shirt and you could go as a hamburger. <laughs> well, that'll do, Leroy. You're just a little boy. You don't know anything about fashions. This color is so new, it hasn't even been in the magazines yet. Hey, Al, how about getting some popcorn and going to a movie? No, we have to get home, Leroy. Bertie will be waiting dinner for us. Oh, by George, this is a good-looking suit. Nice lines. Snappy. Oh, pardon me, madam. <laughs> Why don't you look where you're walking, huh? Well, I just glanced into a shop window. Yeah. Collar fits nice, too. Just like Esquire. Why do they make these store windows so short? Can't get a good look at yourself before you hit the doorway. Uh, excuse me. Hunk. Yeah, all right, Leroy. I'm looking for something. Right here, in fact, in this big, shiny window. Uh, this is more like it. You can't tell anything in those triple mirrors where they sell the suits. You see too many people. Gee, Hunk, why do you want to look into a paint store? Let's go home. Well, I may want to buy some white left. Yes, sir, Gildersleeve, you look pretty good. If this coat with the belt in the back makes those shoulders look fine. <laughs> the pants are nice, too. Unc, I read a story once about a guy named Narcissus. Huh? Who? All he did was sit and look at his reflection in the water. Oh? You know what happened? What? He fell in the lake. <laughs> All right, Leroy, we'll go home. My name is Narcissus, and I'm not going to fall in any lake. Hey, you got a tag on the back of your coat. Maybe this is your name. Oh, a clerk probably left it there. Hey, what does it say? That died boiled and pre-shrunk. Oh, Bertie! Marjorie! We're home! Yeah! Come get a load of our new outfits. Well, Leroy, don't you look nice? Yeah. And who's this man with you? This ain't Mr. Gilsey. Yeah. <laughs> Didn't recognize me, did you, Bert? Say, will you look at that. Mr. Gilsey, you got a new suit, too. Sure. Latest thing, Bertie. This is what they're wearing in New York now. Has pleats in the pants. I got cuffs on mine. How do you like this coat, Bert? Ain't that fancy? You know something, Mr. 
Miss Gilsey's, the way that coat's made, your shoulders is catching up with your waistline. <laughs> now, Bertie? Uh, look at the shoulders on my coat. Of course, I only bought this suit because I needed it. Man has to have more than one suit, especially when he's the water commissioner. Oh, for corn's sake. Yeah, how do you like the color, Bertie? Oh, that's nice. What color is it? Catfish green. <laughs> Dill pickle green. All the young men are wearing it this year. Well, it sure makes you look young, Mr. Gilsey. Well, I am young, Bertie. Yes, sir. In that outfit, you could go to the college football game and sit in the root tootin' section. Sure I could. You could go to those games and help with the root tootin' section. Yeah, I know, Bertie. You'd fit right into that root tootin' section. Yeah, all right, Bertie. Miss Gilsey, you know what you can do in that outfit? Yes, Bertie. That's right, you could go root tootin'. <laughs> Well, Bertie Leroy's right. I'm no mossback. There's plenty of fire in me yet. I'm full of beans. Hello, Uncle Mort. Well, Marjorie, hello, my dear. Oh, Leroy, you look so nice. Yeah. Marjorie, you notice anything about me? Oh, here we go again. <laughs> oh, that's a lovely suit, Uncle. Catfish green. Bill Pickle. It gives you a wonderful figure, Uncle Mort. Like a dill pickle. <laughs> Leroy? Well, isn't the suit at all, my dear? Most of this figure is mine. Around the waist, it's all his. Uh, <laughs> little jokester. The trouble is, Marjorie, the clothes I've been wearing before made me look older than I am. I'm not old. Oh, of course you're not. Right in my prime. A man doesn't come into his full strength until he passes 40. That's right, Unky. Yes, sir. Of course, my waistline is a little large, but I'm not fat. I'm just heavy. Oh, you're wonderful, Uncle Morton. We love you. you uh, thank you, my dear. Don't we love him, Leroy? I think I'll go upstairs. <laughs> yes, and wash your little face for dinner. Oh, I'm going out and help Bertie, Uncle. Great. I think I'll slip in and take a peek in the hall mirror. <laughs> Couldn't see much in that paint store window. Well, that's better. You know, I'm not being like that fellow Narcissus who kept looking at himself in the water. I've got something to look at. Why, George Gildersley, why don't you admit it? You're a powerhouse. <laughs> look at those shoulders. And those arms. Really a sleeveful. Yes, sir, the head of the household. The white stallion leading the wild horses. The bull moose leading the mooses. Hi, Mort. I'm home. Oh, there's Bronco. I'd forgotten about him. Oh, Mr. Gildersleeve. Well, hello, Bronco. Marjorie, here's your little husband. Hello, Bronco. Darling. Hello, Marge, baby. <laughs> My little family. What do you have in the package, darling? Hmm? Oh, this? Oh, these are some scales. Scales? Yeah, I'm going to put them upstairs so I can watch my weight. I weighed myself today, Mr. Gildersleeve. And I've gained three pounds. Well, good. You're growing. That's what worries me, Mr. Gildersleeve. I got quite a shock yesterday. Oh? When I dressed in the morning, I forgot to put on my belt. And I didn't notice it until noon. What was holding your trousers up? That's what worries me. <laughs> oh, Bronco, you've never looked better. Certainly. You're just a boy. You can use a little weight. If you're going to lead the wild horses... I mean, be the head of a family. You've got to build yourself up, like me. Oh, no, Mr. Gildersleeve. Just because I'm going to be a father, I'm not going to let myself go. Now, just a minute. Oh, he's being silly, isn't he, Yankee? Look at the muscles in his arms. Show him your arms, Bronco. Oh, Marge. <laughs> Bronco. Now, Leroy, Bronco doesn't want to show his muscles. Wait till he grows up. That buffalo's gonna get bigger? <laughs> well, Leroy, stop embarrassing your brother-in-law. He's just a boy buffalo. A uh, boy. Bronco, remember how you used to chin yourself in the doorway? Go ahead. Show us how you chin yourself. Oh, no. <laughs> Leave him alone. He doesn't want to chin himself. He doesn't have to. I don't even know if I can do it now. <laughs> Oh, boy, look at the beef. One, two, three, four. Brother, look at him go. Isn't he wonderful, Anki? Oh, yes, yes. Show off. Uh, oh, I can only do 12. Oh, pretty bad. Let's see you do it, Ankh. Me? Well. Hey, Mr. 
They're all good. Dinner's ready. Let's go to the table, everybody. Find me. <laughs> See you chin yourself just once. Leroy, Unky can't do that. Well, that's not for a fat man. I mean, not that you're fat. I mean, for a large man. Oh, is that so? I'm not fat. I'm just well built. Go ahead, Unk. All right. Stand aside. Your feet are still on the floor, Unk. Don't rush me. Well, you got one foot up. Look out, Mr. Gildersleeve. You're breaking the door frame. Oh, could have done it, though. That wood's pretty weak. Why don't we try it on the railroad bridge? <laughs> What's so funny, Marge? You, Unky, swinging in that doorway. Reminded me of the day we went to the zoo. Wolfer, come to the table. Bronco, you sit on the left. Marjorie over here, Leroy over there. This is where we always sit. Well, sit there. <laughs> hey, Bronco, remember that trick you used to do, crawling around the back of a chair without touching the floor? Leroy, Marjorie married a husband, not a performing seal. I remember that trick. Bronco was the only boy at school who could do it. Ready, bring the dinner. How you did that one, Bronco? No, I couldn't do it. Sure you can. Leroy, he said he couldn't. Don't you believe him? Go on, darling. You can do it. Well, all right. Oh, my goodness. This is pretty difficult. You've got to go around the back of the chair without touching the floor. Watch it, Bronco. He's doing it. He's doing it. There. Oh, you did it. I'm ready for Bronco. Oh, uh, it was nothing. Let's see you do it, Uncle. Oh, <laughs> well, just a minute. Leroy, don't be silly. Uncle Mort couldn't begin to do that. Oh, I couldn't. I wouldn't try it if I were you, Mr. Kildersleeve. You keep out of this. I'm the bull moose. I mean, <laughs> I'm the head of the household. I can do anything that kid can do. And I can do it better. I can... Uh... Land alive, what you doing, Mr. Gilsey? He's crawling around the back of a chair. What for? Stand back, Bertie. <laughs> Look how much the chair is dipping. Unky, be careful. <laughs> Are you all right, Uncle? Yes, I'm all right. You should have seen yourself, Uncle. Coming down. <laughs> Mr. Gilsey, you're a real comedian. <laughs> Don't worry about the chair, Mr. Gildersleeve. I can glue it back together. The heck with the chair. Excuse me, Joe. Well, what about dinner, Auntie? Aren't you going to eat? I'm not hungry. I'm going to my room. Uh, oh, hall mirror. There you are, Gildersleeve. Just an old tub. Balloon going down. Narcissus, you fell in the lake. The Great Gildersleeve returns in just a moment. It's fresh. Fresh. Really fresh. Fresh. Always fresh. Fresh. That's why it tastes so good. It's parquet margarine made by Kraft. Naturally, when you buy margarine, you expect it to be wholesome and nutritious. But when you buy parquet margarine, you can expect it to be something else as well. You can expect it to be fresh, really fresh, always fresh, no matter where or when you buy. And because it's fresh, parquet is the margarine that always tastes so good. Yes, parquet is always fresh. It's made fresh from selected products of American farms. It's rushed fresh to your store in refrigerated trucks. It's sold fresh by your grocer. Every package of parquet is flavor-dated, and grocer stocks are regularly inspected by Kraft men. That's why Kraft can positively guarantee to you that no matter where or when you buy parquet margarine, it will be fresh. Fresh. Really fresh. Fresh. Always fresh. Fresh. That's P-A-R-K-A-Y. Parquet margarine made by Kraft. <laughs> Now, let's...
let's get back to the great Gildersleeve. In the story of Snow White, the wicked queen had a mirror that told her anything she wanted to know. Up in his bedroom this morning, the water commissioner has a mirror that's telling him a few things. Uh, Gildersleeve, you may as well face it. You look like a hippopotamus. A water-soaked hippopotamus. No wonder the family laughed when you couldn't chin yourself even once. And when you fell off that chair trying that trick. And that Bronco thinks he's smart. Well, I'm smart, too. I'm not so fat, either. But I pull my chest up a little. Uh, this mirror must be warped. Oh, I wonder what the family will say when I get on to breakfast. Oh, they probably won't say anything. Probably forgotten the whole thing. Sure. I'll just act as if nothing had happened. Why, right, George, I may bruise easily, but I heal fast. Mr. Coming, buddy! <laughs> Mr. Gilsey. Good morning, Betty. Good morning, Unky. Good morning, Marjorie. Good morning, Mr. Gildersleeve. Good morning, Bronco. Hi, Unc. Good morning, Leroy. Gildersleeve, you're in. It's all forgotten. How's the acrobat this morning? Oop. <laughs> <laughs> acrobat? <laughs> what do you mean? Now, Leroy, you hush. Sit down, Unky. I put a pillow on your chair for you, Unc. I don't need it. Your chair in the dining room's going to be all right, Mr. Gildersleeve. I'm gluing the seat back on. That's fine, Bronco. Here's your bacon and eggs, Mr. Gilsey. Thank you, buddy. You ought to have a good appetite this morning, missing your dinner last night. Oh, yes. We're all very sorry about last night, Mr. Gildersleeve. It was my fault. Oh, no, it wasn't, Bronco. We'll just forget the whole thing. Let bygones be bygones. Oh, that's mighty nice of you, Mr. Gildersleeve. You're a big man. Thank you, Bronco. What a fine boy. We... We all want to apologize, Uncle Mort. We we didn't mean to. I I mean, when you fall off that chair. Oh, Marge. <laughs> Cut it out. He couldn't help it. Uncle, <laughs> you're gonna see yourself like a balloon now. <laughs> Excuse me. Mr. Gilsey, ain't you gonna eat your bacon and eggs? No, thanks, Bertie. Where are you going? If I can squeeze through the front door, I'm gonna waddle downtown. Everybody loves a fat man. Well, they don't love me. And I'm not so big. Uh, quit kidding yourself, Gildersleeve. You are, too. Well, confound it, if I can put on weight, I can take it off. Lots of people do. There's those ads in the paper. Mrs. Hogtight Clune of Elbow, Indiana, loses 20 pounds in eight days. Yeah, I'll show that family. I'll trim down. I may be a barge today, but tomorrow I'll be a speedboat. Yeah, I'll bet Peavy can help me. Hello, Peavy. Yeah, hello, Mr. Gildersleeve. Now, what can I do for you this morning? Well, I want to get some reducing medicine, Peavy. Uh, for a friend of mine. Oh? Yeah, fine fellow. But he's a little chubby. Well, I have a number of popular brands. Does your friend have any preference? No, he doesn't know much about these things. Of course, neither do I. <laughs> Yeah, I can see that. <laughs> now, here's a very popular reducing product. Dr. Beagle's Golden Formula. It hounds the pounds away. <laughs> no, I don't think my friend would care for Dr. Beagle. Now, now, here's a preparation that quite a few people are buying. Aunt Marion's Waistline Reducer. It's very effective. They tell of a fellow who used too much and his waistline disappeared entirely. Oh, my goodness. He had quite a time keeping his trousers up. Finally used his wristwatch for a belt. Peavy, is that story true? <laughs> no, but it tells a lot of merchandise. <laughs> well, let's get back to my friend. All right, Mr. Gildersleeve, how many pounds do you want to lose? Oh, about 50... Peavy, I didn't say it was for me. No, you didn't. Oh, all right, it is for me. But it's not that I'm overweight for my size, Peavy. I just thought I'd trim down a little for the winter. 
Well, probably the cheapest way is to stop eating. It's very effective. Yeah, I know, Petey. Now, look at the camel. When he goes a long while without eating, his humps disappear. Beavy, I'm not a camel. Mm, only trying to be a service. Have you tried Judge Hooker's rowing machine? Say, I'd forgotten about that. Rowing is awfully hard work, but I'm desperate. You might give the judge a call. No, I don't want to risk a call. The way I feel today, I could get stuck in that phone booth. You know, I'll go right over to the judge's house and get started in that rowing machine. Good luck. Don't fall overboard. <laughs> See you later, Pete. You're perfectly welcome to use my rowing machine, Gilda. It's here in my bedroom. Well, let's get started, Judge. My position as head of the family is at stake. I'm going to lose some weight if I have to row this thing clear to Greenland. There's nothing like a rowing machine, Gilda. That's how I keep my perfect 36. <laughs> All right, Horace. Every morning, a brisk turn at the oars, and then I have a pick-me-up. Half a rye bun and a beaker of Kalak water. Judge, please. I haven't eaten anything since last night. Oh. Would you like a snack, Gilda? No, thanks. Maybe those camels have an idea. What was that, Gilda? Uh, nothing, Judge. Oh, brother, I'm weak. Uh, uh, help me into the boat. Yeah, sure. Uh, <laughs> there you are, Gilda. Now you're at the oars. I call my bedroom Hooker Lake. You, you, yeah, yeah. 250 strokes on the oars will get you across. That is from Washstand Bay to Pillow Slip Point. You... <laughs> All right, Judge, let me get started. <laughs> Left oar. What's the difference? I'm rowing. But you can't get across the lake unless you go straight. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Left door. Yes. Are you in the boat with me? Certainly. It's a long trip. I'm going along to keep you company. Oh, brother. Going across Hooker Lake on a rowing machine with an old goat. Water commissioner, this time you've struck bottom. <laughs> Hooker Lake. How do I look, Judge? Have I lost any weight? Oh, I'm sure you have, Gildy. You're the picture of hell. Well, thanks for the use of your rowing machine, Judge. But, Gildy, you're across the lake. Aren't you going to row back? No, you can row it, Judge. The way I feel, I'll just catch the first breeze and fly back. <laughs> That you, Miss Gilsey? Yeah, I'm home, Bertie. Mr. Gilsey, you look awful thin. I do? You feel all right, Miss Gilsey? I feel fine, Bertie. Never felt better, in fact. <laughs> uh, where are the children? Miss Marjorie and Mr. Bronco are upstairs. Leroy's out in the yard. You're just in time for lunch. Lunch? Mm. Mm. No. No, I'm not going to eat, Bertie. I'm reducing. I I'm losing weight. But you've got to eat. Everybody's got to eat. Well, not me, Bertie. Call the children, and I'll sit down at the table with them. But I'm not eating. Miss Marjorie! Mr. Bronco! Leroy! Lunch! Yeah. I'll sit down here at the table where they can see me when they come in. I... Uh, Bertie noticed I was thinner. The children are bound to see it. Right, George Gildersleeve, when you set your mind to something, you do it. Hello, Anki. Hello, my dear. Hello, Mr. Gildersleeve. Having lunch with us, I see. Well, not exactly, Bronco. Hi, Anki. Hello, Leroy. Boy, am I hungry. Where's the food? Uh, <laughs> you children notice anything about me? You got a spot on your necktie. It's something bigger. I mean, don't you notice something? Well, I don't see anything, Anki. 
You look fine to me, Mr. Gildersleeve. Children, can't you see I've lost weight? I'm thinner. I haven't eaten anything. I've been exercising. Uncle Mort, you aren't doing this because... because we laughed at you. Well... Oh, Mr. Gildersleeve, not because of us. Well... Gee, Unc, we didn't mean it. You didn't? Oh, Unky, we wouldn't have you changed for anything. We love you just as you are. Sure, don't ever change, Mr. Gildersleeve. Oh, children, this touches me very deeply. Oh, I should have known you wouldn't... Uh, excuse me. I... 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 What's the matter, Unky? I can't get up. I was going out in the kitchen for a drink of water, but now I can't move. It's my own fault. Not eating since last night, rolling across Hooker Lake. My strength is gone. I can't get up. Mr. Gildersleeve, I know why you can't get up. Who? Huh? I glued the seat of your chair this morning, and it wasn't dry yet. Oh. <laughs> Cut to the chair. My new suit. Oh, I'm sorry. I can't help <laughs> Oh, the heck with it. Go ahead and laugh. <laughs> Bernie, bring on the lunch. Great Gildersleeve will be right back. Tomorrow, when you shop, remember this. The margarine that tastes so good because it's always fresh is parquet margarine made by Kraft. In states where colored margarine is sold, get yellow parquet already colored and ready to serve in its wonderful new aluminum foil flavor saver wrap. Elsewhere, get parquet in the handy color quick bag or regular package. In any state, in any package, parquet tastes so good because it's always fresh. That's P-A-R-K-A-Y. Parquet margarine made by Kraft. Get some tomorrow. Hello, PV. Well, you're back again, Mr. Gildersleeve? Yep. You can give me a double banana split. With plenty of whipped cream and don't be stingy with the nuts. How's that? Double banana split with whipped cream and nuts. That's what I thought you said. Yeah, I'm all through trying to get thin, Phoebe. A man should be what he is, not try to be something different. Mm, that's right. Look at you. You're a quiet little druggist. You wouldn't want to change. You wouldn't want to be a big shot. You wouldn't want to have a mansion and a yacht and run around with beautiful movie stars. Well, no, I wouldn't say that. <laughs> Uh, neither would I. Good night, folks. The Great Gildersleeve is played by Willard Waterman. The show is written by Paul West, John Elliott, and Andy White, with music by Robert Armbruster. Included in the cast are Walter Tetley, Mary Lee Robb, Lillian Randolph, Dick Crenna, Earl Ross, and Richard Legrand. This is John Heaston saying good night for the Kraft Foods Company makers of the famous line of Kraft quality food products. Be sure to listen in next Wednesday and every Wednesday for the further adventures of the Great Gildersleeve. Here's a quick, pleasant way to make leftovers more delicious. Just add a little Kraft prepared mustard and you'll add a lot of tang. Hidden flavors in boiled ham, sausage, most any meat pop right out. Every bite tastes better. Now you can get two kinds of Kraft mustard. Salad mustard, delicately spiced for those who prefer a milder flavor. And Kraft mustard with snappy horseradish added. Have both kinds in your pantry. Then with every meat dish, hot or cold, just add a little mustard and you'll add a lot of tang. Kraft prepared mustard. For a half hour of spine-tingling excitement, listen next Sunday afternoon to The Falcon over this station. Check your newspaper for time of broadcast... And here the Falcons solve the case of the double nephews. This is the Great Gildersleeve. On your marks for Groucho on NBC.